What's up guys, Dave Action Jackson coming at you live and well right now I'm actually gonna make a video You guys didn't hear me glitch right now. I said vuh vuh before I did that But I'm about to make a video on two topics because I noticed this at the gym um earlier when I went to the gym I was working out with one of my friends and I noticed something first He had pre fatigue. Yeah, like already had pre or well, I'm gonna say pre pre exhaust he pretty much like exhausted himself before he even started working out so um that and the concept of um i want to talk about ego lifting because it kind of leads into like another topic i want to talk about which is um uh give me one second guys because i'm going to my fitness page if you all know i got my fitness page on here what it looks like but um I think one of the things that you really um it's totally inevitable that you won't pay attention to someone else's form while they're at the gym or while you're at the gym it it'll always happen like a lot me myself a lot of the time I'll pay attention to how other people like perform movements just to make sure that if I pick up something like say they do a certain movement like a, a way I know it shouldn't be done or um, they're going too fast with like um, any kind of exercise really but um so I'm just gonna like um, just because I hit my back of my triceps earlier and I've been um, trying kind of trying to do a little bit of self therapy because my quads are torn up right now like I, I hit my quads on Friday yeah Friday Friday morning and it was rough because on Thursday night I went swimming and then the earlier that day I hit my biceps so I was already sore and then I hurt my sh my rotator cuff while I was swimming so yeah but um now I got like weight on my bar right now I don't know if you guys can see if I got weight on my bar right now it's around uh, like a hundred or 105 pounds um but I'm just using that to like kind of help my hamstrings a little bit and my quads to get like kind of to help them like recover quicker i guess i don't know how to explain it it's just something i discovered when i um it's it, a couple of weeks ago basically but um i'll tell you guys about that in another video but anyway so um i think that um when you pre-exhaust yourself like if you um like i know cardio is uh is like getting you set to like burn fat and all that and help you lose weight and it gets you ready for like the workout workout but here's um one thing i noticed now um while i was at the gym one of my friends my friend was um he's like like a brother of me but um for, i got to the gym around 10 30 and he got there at like 11 20 and him and his dad were going to the treadmill and what happened is because they I hit my back already like I was already doing my back I already did a couple of exercises and a whole lot of sets but um they they did their back like they start to do their back and that he was already exhausted doing the first exercise so I want to talk about that now I think let me sit up on my my like but i think when you um if you do movements too fast because like not only is it like bad form that causes pre-exhaustion but also if you um if you do the movements too fast like if you don't have a controlled range of movement or range of motion when you're doing exercises it's gonna exhaust your muscles quicker and it's gonna make your workout go a lot shorter um it's going to cut it down to size and 
what I saw was because he was doing, um, I want to say lap pull downs, and this is seated lap pull down. So you got the lap pull down machine, you got that, and you're pulling it down. Well, he was doing that. Him and his dad were doing that. His dad was working out. I guess he was working out okay, but my friend was working out at a, like a. Uh, he was already tired, like already tired, and they only did two sets. So, the quicker you do the movements, the harder it gets over time. So, I think, in correlation to that, if you do like a controlled movement, and you, um, you do it at a controlled tempo too. So, say you're doing like lap pull downs from the front, like, or rows. I'm gonna call them rows, but you can call them whatever you want. So, you're doing lap pull downs or rows. Um, if you're doing it like this, like you're just pulling it down, you're not really trying to feel the movement of the muscle, it's going to exhaust you a lot quicker because you're only worried about moving the weight. You're not worried about moving, like you're not worried about the muscle contracting, you're not worried about like the the feeling, basically. Um, a lot of people don't do that. Is they don't, um, well that's one thing a lot of people don't do, is they don't worry about like whether the muscle is actually being worked out or not. They're only doing what they think is working out, but really, you're just moving muscle. And, well, not really moving muscle, moving weight, more or less. Um, the quicker you move a weight around, the harder it is to get those other reps in. And by that, I mean, here's, ex here's how many sets they did. They did three sets. I did a total of 12 sets on just one exercise. And here's the thing, if you lift it for a while and you keep lifting, eventually the, you your skills at lifting more weight and more, doing more sets, it goes up. Like it goes up, you become more proficient at those movements. Um, for the last like two years, I've been doing like lat pull downs and um, rows, seated rows. Um, inverted rows all kinds of things for my back and, and my back isn't like the greatest thing ever but i'm i'm working on myself right now so i'm trying to lose weight and i'm trying to get like some i want mountains on my back basically i want mountains back here no pun intended back on the back <laughs> but yeah like if you're if you're just like moving the the weight if you're moving away, I probably shouldn't be doing it like that though, because I messed up my rotator cuff. So, um, but I'll just show you what my right hand. But if you're just, you know, like you're moving the, the they, we have like an invisible weight right here. So, like an invisible, um, I don't know, handle. And you're just going like this. You're not really worried about like whether you, you feel the movement in the muscle, whether you can feel the muscle moving at all. If you're just worried about, oh, getting the, those reps done, I think it negatively affects how your workout's going to be in the end. And it affects whether you're going to build muscle, lose weight, lose body fat, ultimately. But, um, so the moral basically here is to have controlled movement as well as um pretty much like pace yourself don't do fast movements because fast movements make you pre-fatigue basically and when you pre-fatigue you don't really have very a very long window of working out so your workout could be say you were to work out for like two hours and you you were going hard at moving weight but you weren't going hard as in working out your workout's gonna be like 40 minutes probably because here's how i see it like my friend earlier he was working out like he did the treadmill i think it's like 10 or 15 minutes on the treadmill and then he started doing his back and they only did like on the the row machine they only did two or three sets and the weight like i see because the weight out go maybe like half the stack i can go to two thirds of the stack, probably. If I like was that dedicated to moving heavy ass weight, but I'm not that like. I, 
I prefer to not do ego lifting just because I don't want to hurt myself. But, um, he only did up to like 50 pounds. And I, I was kind of like disappointed because we, like, when I work out with him, I push him. I want him to at least try to like get more in. Because you want, like, if you're working out with someone and you guys are like, I'm, I'm trying to match you set for set. It doesn't matter what the weight is as long as you get the workout. You get it. And by get the workout, I mean, if you can feel the, the muscles moving, if you can feel the muscle contracting, if you can feel the muscle um, being worked out, then I'm going to match you set for set. But if you can't do that, then put the ego aside. Put the ego lifting aside and just do what you can. Now, the other topic I want to talk about, because I don't know if I'll get to all three topics, but because you want to have control movement you want to have to you want to be able to feel the motion in your muscles um that's basically like how i put it in my little post on facebook but control going towards sloppy so you want you want to be able to perform the movements and you want to be able to perform or perform them at a in such a way that you could feel the muscle being worked out yeah you'll be sore but at the same time at least you have the accomplishment of being able to feel that muscle being worked out or those group of muscles groups of muscles being worked out um another thing i want to talk about is bad form and then i want to talk about um like weightlifting and motion sickness but i might make that in another video because weightlifting like if you guys watch any, any like deadlifting videos um deadlifting squatting um watch the fail videos the fail videos like it it'll say vomit alert my my camera just glitched right now but it'll say vomit alert and the problem is the, when those people if you here's what I want to say if you have to throw up if your body is forced so much to the point where you gotta throw up or pass out you shouldn't do that you should not do those movements because those are ones that will get you hurt a lot quicker and they it's not gonna pay later on if you're doing that like it's gonna hurt affect you negatively overall now bad form bad form is it's directly linked like i think it's intertwined with ego lifting because ego lifting if you don't know what ego lifting is and i i made a video about this a couple of days ago but um ego lifting is say you you can lift like a certain amount of weight like, I'm gonna say I could curl 60 pounds and even though I could curl a hundred pounds but um in order to do those weights like you gotta if you're gonna say you can do something you gotta prove it and ego lifting is that exactly you do one thing like you say one thing but you do something totally different and ego lifting makes people mess up a lot in the gym it's probably like the leading reason why people get hurt at the gym too it's because they lift way too much weight and a weight that they really shouldn't be lifting but they try either way and still fail now bad form because bad form it's you'll see it everywhere it doesn't matter what gym it's in whether it's an underground gym a hardcore gym whatever if it's a sports club an athletic club um, just regular gym You'll always see it. It's kind of like when you're watching a swim competition and you see like older older people Versus little kids little kids will slap the water and they'll do all that and they'll just rush uh, even though an adult like I said a, a really skilled adult that um, they control how they do the motion bad form is 
the little kid that's slapping the water trying to just get it done. Now, I've seen a lot of bad form, and I, I'll tell you guys about it too. So, earlier while I was at the gym, my, my best friend, I wanted to help him so bad because I didn't want him to get hurt. And I don't want, um, I don't want him to stop going to the gym because he just started going back. So here's what happened. Um, his workout was cut short, and I don't think it's from bad form. It's just he, like I said earlier, he pretty much exhausted himself, and the bad form it caused that. Now, when you're doing rows, like or like I don't know, lat pull downs or whatever. You want to control the weight, and the reason why I say control the weight is because you want to be able to feel it. When you feel it, if you can't feel it and you're just doing this, you're more prone to hurt yourself. If you can feel the workout, if you're going on a control movement, and like basically, if you could feel the movement and the muscle being worked out, if the muscle being worked out, and you feel it, it's not bad form. It's not bad form. You just gotta be controlled. Because if you're like curling and you're just swinging the bar up, or you're like benching and you're just pushing the weight up, but I'll just show you guys this, like, because it kind of makes sense. But if you're just curling and you're just going like rocking back and forth, you're just rocking and rocking and rocking, it's not working anything out. If you are doing, like, if you're doing bicep curls, and I'm going to show you guys this right now because I think this kind of, it, it makes sense. So, if you're doing bicep curls and the dumbbell or barbell, whatever one you have, if it comes way up here, that's bad form. Like, automatically, I'm going to categorize that as bad form because you shouldn't bring a, a dumbbell up towards your face. That's not how you do it. If the dumbbell, because let's just put it like this. If you get hit in the face with the dumbbell, you automatically should just smack yourself or like stop doing whatever you're just doing because you're not working anything out I mean you might be moving like your shoulders and like your bicep yeah it's up and closed and like, yeah you got that up there but it's not it's not working um I think if you if you can control the weight and control the form then I got a phone call right now but um it you'll be fine but anyways guys it's David Action Jackson coming at you live I'm gonna talk to you guys later I'm out because I gotta answer the phone <laughs>